Well, uh, thanks, you. thanks everybody who's joining us on the call here uh, today. As I said, we'll be recording this session. So uh, hello to those of you watching this back later. My name is Corey Redderkup. I'm the CEO of the Greater Langley Chamber of Commerce. I'm pleased to be hosting today's session uh, with uh, on Gloucester transportation options and to have uh, translating a few other key contacts here today uh, to discuss some of the, the developments in this space. Um, I do want to start before we get any further and acknowledge that we're meeting on the traditional territories of the Kwantlen, Matsui, Keitsi, and Semiamu First Nations, and we appreciate the opportunity to conduct our work as a chamber on these lands. Um, as I've said, this is a Zoom webinar, so those of you watching, you'll be able to hear and see us uh, up here speaking, but you can relax as you shouldn't be on camera or mic. Uh, if you do have questions, you should be able to go into the Q&A function at the bottom of your screen, and, and you should have also a chat function that would come directly to us, and you could ask those questions as we go. Uh, just a little bit of background. As I mentioned, I'm here representing the Langley Chamber, which is the business association for Langley businesses. We have about a thousand local businesses that are members of the chamber, and we have a keen interest in any matters that impact employers, obviously transportation and transit being one of those. Um, we've been advocating and working with TransLink and the provincial government on the importance of getting transit service to Gloucester for, for years as an organization. And, and in my time here at the chamber, uh, we've certainly been refocused on that. Uh, so we know the critical impacts it has on employee attraction and retention uh, for businesses in the area at the very least. Uh, today's session is about a couple of measures which will um, help provide service to this area. We're, we're clear-eyed in the fact that this is not a full solution to what, we, what we're looking for, what we need, but uh, we will be talking about a specific uh, private shuttle service here, and then typically offering some other options as well. Um, but we wanted to give a chance to talk about some um, uh, options that are uh, viable and on the ground right now, um, while we continue to work for uh, improvements on, on other issues. And interestingly, another file we've been actively working on is the Highway 1 expansion. And, and yesterday on, this, on August 2nd, we saw the plans for uh, the new 264th overpass and the widening through Abbotsford um, with, a, with a transit loop in there and, and bus service and park and ride parking. So there's a lot of action on this file right now. Um, so the chamber is going to be even more engaged on, on the Highway 1 and Gloucester issues uh, than ever before, I think, over the coming years. So I um, appreciate everyone's time to, to join us today and, and to talk about our topics today. Um, I'm really pleased to have uh, a couple of folks uh, from he from uh, Translink joining us. I'm going to pass the floor over to uh, Zachary Strom, Senior Travel Smart Specialist in Transportation Demand Management with Translink, who's going to be leading us through some information on the new private shuttle service in Gloucester. And then uh, Tiffany, I believe, will be taking care of some other issues. So maybe, Zach, if I can pass it over to you to run with the, the session here, and uh, I'll uh, relinquish the floor over to you. All right, excellent. Thank you very much for the introduction. Uh, for those of you who are joining, uh, my name is Zach Strom. There may be some folks here who might have seen me coming around Gloucester Estates, passing up some uh, posters to talk a bit about the uh, emerging uh, shuttle service, which is operated by ACE Charters. Um, today, I'm going to go through a brief set of slides just to give a quick recap on the uh, inception of the service and kind of the general history behind offering uh, service to Gloucester. Um, so Tiffany, if you don't mind just placing the PowerPoint on the screen. Thank you very much. Um, so here we have a list of the folks that are here uh, on behalf of TransLink as well as uh, ACE Charters, the organization who liaised with TransLink to get this service up and going as well as our uh, kind and generous host who was able to get us uh, all together today. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, and then uh, just one more tab. Thank you. So for general context, and this is something that I think many individuals here um, can understand, um, Gloucester Industrial Estates <clears throat> has historically been a bit of a cha challenging travel market to service, uh, mainly because uh, it's located in a portion of the region where we simply are not necessarily able to offer bus stops, um, and there isn't necessarily a firm link either between BC Transit Service Area and TransLink, which unfortunately has created a myriad of challenges for recruitment and retention for businesses uh, in uh, Gloucester. Um, the walking distance to the nearest TransLink bus, bus stop is over five kilometers, so uh, that's definitely been a bit of a challenge. And there are employees who anecdotally I have heard over the years are attempting that walk each and every single day to get to work when they don't have any alternative options. Um, as early as 2011 and potentially even earlier, there have been some conversations between TransLink, Gloucester businesses, as well as uh, 
the township of Langley uh, to get service started. And unfortunately, after multiple attempts, including a short-lived Alder Grove trolley, there was not really much success in being able to get something more stable going. And following the pandemic, um, my team specifically in TDM, who works uh, primarily with employers to offer alternative services whenever we're not necessarily able to offer transit as a primary benefit, um, have been looking more into the realm of employee shuttle services using third party carriers that are able to fill those gaps a bit more quickly and at a reduced uh, cost in terms of capital and operations expenditures. And in early 2023, ACE Charters uh, began working with uh, the Abbotsford uh, Airport Authority as well as TransLink's new mobility team to initiate a service between Surrey and Abbotsford Airport. And those conversations eventually led to the implementation of a stop at Gloucester Estates as part of the routes between uh, Surrey King George Station and Abbotsford Airport. Um, just next tab. Um, so on, on the topic of the uh, fixed routes, some of our ongoing challenges uh, with providing service um, <clears throat> primarily stem from uh, our inability to expand um, given some fiscal constraints uh, due to the pandemic. And then also with our working relationship with BC Transit, there is a discussion to potentially reroute service along its Fraser Valley Express to accommodate uh, those employees who may be coming in from either Langley or from Abbotsford or beyond, um, but it is going to take some time to get that going. And one of the challenges that we have, um, despite being able to initiate this uh, service with ACE Charters, is that we can't equip them with Compass technology to accept stored value. And then we're also legislatively prohibited from subsidizing uh, private carriers, including their operating fares. So what we've done, and to the credit of ACE Charters, is we've worked with them to be able to create some alternative uh, pricing uh, mechanisms and fare media to be able to accommodate regular commuters. And we were also able to lease them curb space at our King George station, which typically is something that is not commonplace um, in the lower mainland when it comes to a private carrier. But in this instance, given the critical need, we wanted to make sure to get something up and running to Gloucester as soon as possible. Next slide. So um, as some of you may know, um, ACE Charters launched its shuttle service on June 27th, 2023. Um, and the photos that you see here in the slides are from the maiden voyage, uh, just as the vehicle was pulling up. And for Gloucester specifically, we were able to settle on a stop um, at uh, 26, or sorry, 26730 56th Avenue near Colleen's Cafe which essentially made it the easiest to be able to uh, pick up and drop off uh, individuals in the business park and allow for the vehicle to return back to Highway 1. Um, as mentioned earlier, um, for those that are commuting uh, regularly to Gloucester, um, there is a $110 uh, monthly commuter ticket, which is inclusive of GST. Um, that would allow for Gloucester staff to be able to connect either from Abbotsford to Gloucester or from King George Station in Surrey um, to Gloucester Estates. Um, as of today, the ridership has been, based on our data reports, a bit modest, uh, with the strongest ridership being between Abbotsford Airport and Surrey. And we found that uh, due to a number of factors, including the shift start and end times of employees, that now we're in a position where we would like to be able to advance some additional options. Um, so having spoken with ACE Charters, um, a discussion was uh, had a few weeks back and uh, they have decided to offer chartered services to those that are able to assemble a group of at least 10 employees to travel to King George Station or to Abbotsford. And as part of this effort, uh, monthly commuter tickets uh, that are sold by ACE Charters will be accepted on these um, alternative uh, trips. So for those of you in the audience who have a group of employees that need to travel outside of the regularly scheduled service, um, this is definitely an opportunity to fill that gap, something which even if we were operating transit out to Gloucester Estates would be quite a challenge to solve using fixed routes. And with that in mind, um, for next steps, TransLink is going to continue to monitor the ridership on the shuttle to determine 
the feasibility for expanding some more conventional transit options in the future. And in the interim, we're also looking internally at pursuing some opportunities to improve the fare connectivity for shuttle users. And what I mean by this is with ACE Charters having to charge its own ticket rate and then TransLink having to charge its own fare media rates on a compass card, inevitably there are some challenges with connectivity. And we recognize that the technological constraints um, aren't making this necessarily a near-term option, but we are definitely looking at this in the medium term and finding some potential creative solutions that would allow for the shuttle user to easily transition onto our SkyTrain and bus network and vice versa to make it affordable as well as uh, generally easier to use. And a good segue into our next uh, topic is we're also looking at presenting some additional mobility solutions beyond uh, the shuttle as well as uh, conventional transit. But before we proceed to that, um, I wanna go ahead and put uh, the information for ACE Charters on the screen. Uh, for those of you in the audience who are watching, if in case you have any general inquiries or if you haven't had an opportunity to visit the shuttle service websites, um, you're welcome to go ahead and proceed here and uh, visit the website to get a sense of the schedule, pricing for one way, round trip, as well as monthly passes. And if you have any general questions at all, you're welcome to follow up directly with me via email, which is on the screen. Or if you would like, you can also send a general inquiry to our Travel Smart inbox, which is generally an area where if you're looking for support with alternative mobility services, some um, TransLink staff will be able to support you. And on the call, I have Ali with uh, ACE Charters Vancouver. So if any questions come up during the session that you'd like to ask Ali, um, he would be able to answer those as well, uh, more so pertaining to the operational nature and scheduling of the shuttle service. So um, with that, I want to thank everybody for their time and attention. And uh, we're happy to continue supporting uh, Gloucester employees and businesses. And again, I recognize that it has been an ongoing challenge and we are here to provide as much support as we can within uh, the parameters that we are currently um, facing today. Um, so with that, so I'll go ahead and pass no, it. Exactly. To, sorry. Before we before we jump on to um, Tiffany's section here, I did have a couple, couple of questions that did come through to me personally here on um, sure. uh, the, the service here. I don't know if Ali wants to, to jump on and, and answer any of these. So I, I, one question, just seeking clarity on, I think you touched on it in your slides, but seeking clarity on where does the shuttle pick up in King George? Where does it drop off in Gloucester and where exactly at the airport uh, is going? And then we had a question on, um, the schedule, and I know you got you got the link there on the schedule, but I don't know if we have that handy on how frequent or how many, how when when does it start and when does it end during the day. So I don't know if you have any of that information handy on on pickup drop off locations and hours, or if Ali wants to jump in. But those are two questions that we had coming from the audience here. Um, so for pickup and drop off locations um, at King George Station, um, there is a passenger pickup and drop off area, which is located just as you come down the escalator into the kind of park and ride pickup area. It's in sort of a U shape. And um, there's typically um, a series of uh, vehicles. Uh, it could be moto vehicles. Um, it could be uh, people that are kind of loading and unloading. And then in that same area, there's also a handy dart uh, pickup uh, sign just in front of it. There's also a shuttle stop that says ACE Charters uh, where passengers can go ahead and board the vehicle. Um, and as mentioned earlier in the discussion, uh, Colleen's Cafe is the primary pickup area and drop off area for Gloucester Estates employees. And Ali, you're welcome to jump in and correct me. I believe there are some concessions for drop offs um, within a particular range at Gloucester Estates. Uh, so if uh, you need to be dropped off a little bit further, or potentially a little closer to the um, highway, then I believe that there should be some flexibility there. Um, but Ali, you're welcome to go ahead and jump in and correct me if I'm wrong there. No, you're correct, uh, Zach. We can now all, all, always accommodate that extra drop off if it is within the area. Okay, and then in terms of the schedule, um, the shuttle rock runs approximately every two hours, um, going from uh, King George initially and then coming back around from Abbotsford Airport. And the end time is approximately 8.30 p.m. leaving Gloucester going westbound back to King George. 
Great, thanks for that. And then uh, we had a question to, on ticket costs, and, and I think you mentioned there the monthly a monthly fee a monthly uh, pass, which is the best value there. Do you have information uh, the Uzac or Ali on for ticket prices? And then that monthly thing, I think it was one hundred and ten dollars. I saw, and that would be uh, like a monthly pass for to use it as much as you want. Is that correct? Uh, yes, that's correct. That's correct. And then for one way, um, one way trips, um, let me just go ahead and uh, pull the uh, fare table up here. Um, so I believe it was approximately uh, $10 one way plus GST and then uh, $18 round trip uh, in plus GST. Right, that's, that's where the individual prices, then that's where, yeah, obviously if you're, if you're able to do that monthly pass then you get some, some great savings there. Exactly. Yeah, and then uh, I got another, another interest in the chat box here. Yeah, so we go from King George Station, it swings in to Gloucester at, uh, and then drops at Colleen's, and then it goes on to Abbotsford, um, and that's one route, and then it's Abbotsford, back to Gloucester, Colleen's, and then back to King George, right? Correct. There you go, perfect. Thanks, thanks, for, the, thanks for the question, and then and that in the, chat, uh, in the chat box is there. Uh, we'll we'll um, let Tiffany kind of move on to some other options that might exist for your employees or people in this in the space. But if there's any other questions that as you're thinking about the shuttle that come up, please let us know um, and throw them in the chat box there. If that's the easiest for you. Um, but uh, maybe I'll I'll duck out of here and go back over to Tiffany. Okay. So hi everybody. My name's Tiffany, and uh, thank you for tuning in. So uh, right now I just want to talk about something that uh, Transic has been piloting for a while and uh, it's called the Transic Vampa program. So first of all, it uh, we did start having this program initiated at UBC and uh, we ran this from 2019 and until uh, 2022. And this was just the pilot phase. We had about uh, 10 vans with 56 participants uh, during our peak. But again, when COVID hit, a number of people left uh, due to um, right COVID. So, um, well, with the success of the UBC pilot, of uh, Transic has decided to move forward and introduce the Transic Vample program, which is I'm bringing to you guys today. So, um, what is Vample? A Vample is a co uh, collaborative commuting solution designed for individuals who travel extended distances to their workplaces. It involves coordinating uh, transportation among people who share similar schedules for their daily commute. So. Um, how does that, like, what are the pickup locations for Vanpool? So uh, we do residential pickups. Commuters have the convenience of boarding the van right from their residential area. This ensures a seamless and hassle-free st uh, start to their work day, eliminating the need for additional travel before the actual commute. Uh, mind you, the van pool, the van that we provide for you guys would be actually something that uh, we partnered with Moto. So Moto actually provides the car for you. So you don't have to actually use uh, your own car, which would be similar to what carpool would be, but this is, uh, we've actually provided the van for you. Uh, we also do uh, parking lot pickups. Our service also extends to designated parking lots, allowing commuter commuters to join the van pool from a centralized and easily accessible location. This option is particularly beneficial for those who reside near these parking facilities. Um, we do transit station stops. So like park and rides, our Vanpool program is strategically offers pickup points near well-connected transit stations. This provides a smart solution for individuals who rely on public transportation for the daily commute, enabling a smooth transition from one mode of transportation to another. And we also do it at shopping centers. So we understand the value of convenience in today's fast-paced life. Hence, we've incorporated pickup spots near popular shopping centers. This not only um, makes it convenient for commuters, but also serves an, a, as an efficient way to make the most of their time, combining daily commuting with errands. So uh, we also provide customized routes. So the beauty of Vampool right now is since we're moving from a pilot to the program phase, we're really open to trying different things, new ideas. So you if you if we make a Vampool group for you, you can also kind of design the route that you'd like to go or different pickup locations, which we're pretty, pretty open to providing. Uh, so by offering these diverse pickup choices, our Vampool program aims to make commuting not only efficient, but also adaptable 
to dynamic roots of modern day work situations. So the end destination. Our Vampool services does not just stop at convenience during pickup, it also ensures a seamless journey to your place of work. We offer direct transportation to your workplace, guaranteeing efficiency and reliability through the entire commute. The journey does not just begin with convenience, but also concludes seamlessly as well. Uh, one thing that uh, van poolers noticed at UBC was that um, van pooling presents an eco-conscious alternative that not only contributes to a greener environment, but also actively alleviates traffic congestion. Moreover, it stands as a convenient commuting choice that caters to the needs of employees in a modern bustling world. So um, I just want to delve a little deeper on how Vanpool works. So who pairs me up with other riders? Vanpool, um, Vanpool coordinators or transportation agencies match individuals with similar commuting routes and work schedules to form a Vanpool group. So we actually partners up with Lyft Tango. So we'll, how work is uh, we will give you a website and you'll just add in your um, uh, like the times that you work and also the days that you work and where you generally live or where you want the pickup location to be. And from there, the um, web app would actually match everybody uh, with other partners to see how many people we can fit into one van. And from there, we'd ask you, hey, you know, these are seven people and they all generally are around here. Would you like to start a van pool group? So as I mentioned earlier, who provides a vehicle? Uh, it's provided by Moto, the car share, everything's included in the cost. So maintenance, insurance, gas, uh, parking, and um, everything else that uh, comes into vehicle ownership is actually within the Vampool um, cost. So uh, again, um, who covers the gas insurance? We were mentioning Moto. And then who handles the payment? So a payment is actually done through the Lyft Tango web app. So it's really seamless. You just put in your credit card and you're good to go. And it's a monthly on a monthly basis. So who enjoys the ride? Sit back and relax as you. So uh, someone else will drive. And what generally works really well in the Vampo groups that we noticed with the UBC pilot is that everybody actually rotates driving. So maybe for one week, you'll drive. The next week, uh, let's say me and Zach are in a group, Zach drives next week. So you don't have, so maybe you might be going on for a couple of weeks without even driving at all because everybody's rotating driving. So um, what are the benefits of Vampo? Actually, you'll notice here um, on the little emojis or icons that I put up. These are actually all things that um, when I did a survey for the UBC pilot, these were the highlights that um, the UBC uh, van poolers said. So um, first of all, we have cost savings. So van pooling allows employees to share the cost of commuting, significantly reducing individuals' transportation expenses such as fuel uh, and parking fees. By joining the uh, van pool program, your employees can well, the employees can enjoy substantial savings and improve their overall financial well-being. So we also have um, more social opportunities. So we found that a lot of people had a chance to talk to each other, your coworkers, or at the same time, um, you can talk amongst your group and say like, hey, you know what, can we keep this as a no talking time? We actually have a VAPO group that said, you know, we work really well because uh, we say no music in the car. So they actually don't do music. And that's kind of how the Vampo group, group works really well. Um, we also found that improved punctuality. Everybody got into the van at the same time and they all got to work at the same time. They didn't have to look for parking because we do, as you notice, we have reserved 24 hour parking for the Vampo groups. So uh, we'll work with the companies and see, hey, can we actually put up a um, parking spot right at the entrance? So you don't have to look for parking. It's already reserved for the Vampo groups. And this is also a fan favorite for a lot of, uh, the nurses at the UPC hospital who are um, looking to use the program as well. They love the idea of having uh, reserve parking. Uh, oops, oh, sorry. Uh, obviously with the uh, reduction in fuel consumption was is super, oh, sorry. I think, um, no, we're good. Okay, and then also you get to use the HOV lane, which is really awesome. And then also it works really well for people who don't have access to a vehicle or you only have one car in your household and there's another person in your household that needs a vehicle. We also found that also reduces carbon emissions by uh, a significant amount because if you can fit seven people in a car, that takes six cars off the road. Uh, next slide. So uh, we sh are just gonna show you just the quick car types. We've actually been working with Moto to get you guys the newest cars. 
So um, no car is older than three years old, and they all have a lot of really great benefits. AC, heated steering wheel for those cold days in December. Uh, so quick thing. Okay, so we'll move on to the next slide. So why choose Vampoo over a personal vehicle? Here we present the comprehensive cost structure of our, oh, sorry. It's just to show you guys the illustration on the left is um, compelling cost comparison between traditional vehicle ownership and your Vampo program and the Vampo program. We'll delve into a real world example focusing on the commuter from um, Surrey Central to UBC. For individuals driving approximately 41 kilometers in their standard SUV, the cost can soar up to $1,040 per month because of the cost of maintenance, fuel, insurance, monthly parking, and the depreciating cost of a car. As opposed to Vanpool, if you have a seven people in a car with the same ride, it gets up, it's around $304 with the, the same ride, considering that everything's included in the cost. So um, I wanna quickly show you the uh, cost structure. So the cost structure is basically based on um, the amount of people in the car, the distance that you're going, and the, uh, and the type of car that we end up with, and also the amount of people in the car. Sorry if I already said that. So um, like I said, everything goes into the cost. Uh, sorry, everything's included in the cost. Uh, Zach, did you wanna talk really quickly about the 90-day um, transit benefit? Sure. Um, so for context, um, Tiffany works with TransLink's new mobility team, and I work with TransLink's transportation demand management team. And in an effort to support uh, remote business parks and other travel markets that are generally underserved by transit, we're offering a limited time 90 day transit benefit. And essentially the way that this benefit is administered is whenever a new staff person or whenever a new user enrolls to the Vanpool program, they can receive up to $100 in stored value on a compass card. And the idea here is to encourage people to not just take advantage of TransLink's Vanpool solution, but also to really look critically at using transit to connect to Vanpool and vice versa. So if there are any staff members, for example, commuting from Langley who want to start their Vanpool trip at Carvolt Exchange, where there generally is abundant parking, um, the person can take transit to reach the station, or if they need to carpool to reach the station, they can do so, switch into the Vanpool vehicle, and then they'll have that additional cost covered if they want to transition over to transit. Um, so that's the general aim with offering this 90-day benefit. And the reason why it's specifically 90 days is, is that's generally the minimum amount of time that a new enrollee would need to remain in the Vanpool program. Um, so by being able to take advantage of transit during those first three months, it's uh, generally something that we're hoping will encourage people to continue on with Vanpool as uh, they begin to get to know the program a bit better. Another thing I want to add is that you notice that the distance on the side here is like 21 to 30 kilometers. Um, we haven't really updated this, the, this part yet. We're still waiting for our uh, marketing team to uh, create it. But it actually me it actually is a two-way distance cost. So the 41 kilometer that I was mentioning, uh, let's say from Surrey to UBC is 41 kilometers. That is the cost. So it wouldn't be like uh, let's say the $409 you see there, it wouldn't be $818. It would it would still be 409. That would be the cost from Surrey to UBC and UBC to Surrey as the full uh, monthly cost. So it is. It does become more affordable as the more people you add in the vehicle, and then uh, when you move into a different vehicle, as you upgrade. So, um, just to delve in a little deeper about the day in a life of a van pooler. So how it works is basically, let's say we create a van pool group and there's four of us. So and I live the furthest away. So what it would what is an, uh, one scenario is that uh, the vehicle would actually be parked a maximum of three minutes from my home. And then I would go to the car, grab it, and then I would pick everybody up. And then from there, we'd ride uh, to go to work together. And we drop off the car at uh, the designated parking spot uh, that's in front of the business or in front of your workplace. And then from there, uh, we'll uh, the, the car will be there. And then when you get off work, uh, you will take the car and drop everybody back off. So how does the moto fit in? So basically when the car's parked at your home base location, 
uh, the other people who join Moto or are also Moto members can use the car when it's not being used as a van pool. So, um, for example, if it's parked near your home, you can actually use the car as your secondary car and use it during off hours or during the weekend. Or if you want the vehicle to be parked at a, uh, let's say, a SkyTrain parking ride or the uh, the mall, it can also be used by other Moto members when the van pool group's not being used. This is also the same case for when the Moto vehicle is being parked at the work base location. So for those that um, need the need to use a secondary car for work, like uh, going to meetings or using it as a office car, the Moto car could also be used that way as well. So when it's not being used for a van pool, uh, people who need to go off site to go to meetings can book the Moto vehicle and use it like that. So even when it's being used, the car will always be back an hour or so before your shift ends or your work day ends. So the car will always be there to take you back home. And as I mentioned earlier, just because you live the furthest away and you pick up the car, it doesn't mean you're going to be the designated driver. People end up shifting driving. So even if I, let's say I go to Zach's house, Zach can actually will switch spots. So he'll drive the rest of the way to the office. So um, I hope that uh, answers some of the, some people's questions that they might have had. Uh, and generally speaking, we do range from three to seven people in the car, but we do encourage people to add more because that has more savings. So um, quickly wanted to show you how you can sign up. So uh, if you guys have your phones with you, scan the QR code. If not, feel free to email me. Uh, I'll also add a link to the website that you can uh, sign up onto the chat in a second. But uh, when you sign up to Vanpool, uh, you can click the Gloucester uh, section, which is a uh, select a plan, it'll say Gloucester on there and you click it and you can sign up. And the best thing, well, to make that pool work is that we need enough people to sign up. So you have to ask a bunch of your coworkers or your staff to just uh, sign up. You don't sign up right away and start to pay. It's just trying to find people. It's a free ride matching software just to see, are there people living in your area? Um, do you guys start at the same time? Do you guys have the same work schedule? And can we create a van pool group? And from there, we'll offer and let you know, send you an email. Hey, by the way, there's five people in your area. Did you want to start a van pool group? Would you be interested? This is your cost structure. So um, that's generally how what we're doing right now with TransLink and van pool and seeing if we can help you guys find better alternatives to get to work. Okay. Yeah. So, Thanks for that, Tiffany. I appreciate yeah. appreciate that. You the information's on the screen there. If anybody wants to follow up, all the all the the, the links, the emails, the, the 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 materials we'll be sharing afterwards on 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 this. I think we wanted to make sure that we talked about uh, a few different options uh, that um, can maybe help uh, fill the gap that we we all identify is is uh, Gloucester is sharing uh, facing. So we went at the beginning. I know Zach went over the the shuttle service, and we can and we talked about that connection from Surrey SkyTrain to Gloucester to Abbotsford Airport, and then the Van Pool is another. Uh, interesting new uh, service that Transing is offering and, and as she as Tiffany mentioned they had a, a, a successful pilot in UBC and they wanted to make sure that this is offered to the people in Gloucester in case there's enough of a, of a critical mass that might be able to take advantage of this again as another another option to hopefully get um, staff and employees in and out of, of, of the area because that's that's what we need to accomplish is making it easier for people to get to and from work uh, in Gloucester there so um, I as part of the um, the this Piece. We will be sending a recording of the video here, along with some materials on the shuttle uh, and links to the schedule, uh, contact information with, with for uh, Tiffany and Bamcool and, and Zach and, and the shuttle pieces. Um, and then we can uh, hopefully get some more information uh, to you. But the, I think these these tools are, are designed to hopefully help uh, some some employees make that uh, make that trip into Gloucester, where, where right now it's it's becoming a bit of a barrier for them. If there's any final questions you want to ask on the shuttle service, uh, you can pop that into the chat box there. Um, I had a question here on uh, does the service have to be used daily or can we be used for lesser days? So I think that's referring to the van pool question. Um, so Tiffany, how does that work on yeah. um, uh, if, if you have if, it, if it's you're using it every day or does it, does it not matter how often you're using it? Um, you so how it works is van pool. If you were going for lesser days, we try to match with people with the lesser days, like to see if we can match. Like let's say you don't go on a Wednesdays, we'll try to match your group that doesn't go on a Wednesdays. Or let's say you're the only one that doesn't come in on Wednesdays, but everybody else goes in every day, then you'd have to work out the cost kind of with your uh, Vampo groups. Maybe you pay a little less or sorry, you pay a little, yeah, a little bit less and everybody pays a little bit more if they're okay with that. But generally speaking, let's say the car is uh, $600 to run a whole month uh, with the kilometers that you're using, then you actually divide that by the amount of people. 
So that's kind of how the cost is done. And, and, and the whole point of this is, is, is the software ideally would connect people who, yes. yeah, everybody who, who works Tuesday mornings would be connected together. And if you only work Thursday morning, exactly. then obviously you would be in a different group. Yeah. That, so that, that shows, again, yeah, a, a, another another option mm -hmm. for folks. Uh, I know a number of people on the line here have a few hundred employees. Uh, so it might be, again, something that, that might be able to, to generate some uh, some interest from your from your staff as, as another another option there. So again, I, we encourage you to take advantage if you can uh, of, of uh, certainly the shuttle service. I mean, I think that we, we need to be making sure that we're, we're utilizing, and, and Zach mentioned that they're looking at, at usage, I think for, for us as a business community to want to make sure that we get the proper service, uh, the full the full link service that we, we all want in Gloucester. I think we need to be, we be uh, taking advantage of the shuttle so that we can see the demand there. Um, and I think it, it will, um, it will hopefully will address some of the concerns on people being able to get in and out of the area. Um, we did talk about how there is options for um, some off schedule uh, um, uh, off schedule bookings if you have a group of 10 or more so maybe consider that as well uh, if that's if that's a barrier to you based on your shifts and things so um any uh, zach any final words on the shuttle or gloucester or translink that you want to share with the group before we sign off here oh i think we've lost your audio there so i'm going to i'm going to assume oh, I can oh, assume I can... there we there go, we go. Yeah, it's always at least once a day with uh, virtual meetings. My apologies, everybody. Uh, so there is one question uh, that was raised uh, as to whether the Township of Langley has been approached for funding or subsidizing of the Gloucester shuttle to improve availability and timing. Um, so in short, no, um, and mainly because uh, the Township of Langley, um, due to our inability to expand service into the Gloucester area, as well as other portions of the township, um, probably would not be too thrilled if we came forward and asked them to subsidize a third party service. Although with that being said, if there is an appetite from the Township of Langley to start pursuing more alternative mobility solutions as a whole, we definitely would be open to supporting them uh, with uh, connecting them to our providers, uh, which include Ace Charters, uh, who operates the shuttle as well as others uh, in the market that operate uh, carpooling services, and then even really promoting uh, the concept of van pool, especially for those areas where we know that we're not necessarily able to justify the expansion of conventional bus service, uh, but we still wanna make sure that people who live in those areas are able to commute into work, who are able to take advantage of our system for discretionary travel, and really more importantly, just have that freedom of mobility so if I had to leave any closing remarks uh, on this subject, uh, it's that the options on the table today are not necessarily the end of the road. If anything, this is just the beginning. And as we start to um, embrace more emerging mobility services and technologies that work better even than conventional transit, we want to make sure that we can work with you and with your employees and with any of your partner organizations and networks to really get the word out there and find ways to be able to make those more appealing uh, to your overall um, constituency. So by all means, if you have any questions at all, you are welcome to reach out at any time. Perfect, I appreciate that. And then uh, last, lastly, before we sign off here, there was just a quick question on the service area for Banpool. I know obviously we, we you did the pilot pilot in, in UBC and, and, uh, and uh, that part of Vancouver, but where where does it where does it cover uh, in in our neck of the woods here? Yeah, we definitely cover your area. We had people like just think of it as in distances. So we had people coming from Abbotsford, Langley, White Rock, uh, just going to UBC. So we're really open to any dip, any type of service area where how far you need you are to go to work. We're there to service that. There you go. So I hope that answers your question there. Yeah, exactly. And then it, the, the car kind of starts starts in the farthest and works our way towards Gloucester and it picks up people along the way. And then exactly. There we go. But, uh, exactly. Yeah. The uh, no. Well, thank, thanks uh, to, to Zach and Tiffany on here. Just as I said up the top, the, the chamber works every day to advocate and advance things that matter to, to Langley business. And we're going to continue working on this file. As Zach said, this is, is hopefully the, the start of the road of, of, of options for for Gloucester. Um, and and we know that uh, that yeah, with hundreds of businesses and over ten thousand employees, we need uh, that transit and transportation. We're encouraged by what we've seen coming out of the province on the Highway One expansion um, uh, that just came out this week. So I think there's going to be a lot of a lot of things that we can do to hopefully uh, make Gloucester. Uh, 
even more accessible and a great place to do business. So I appreciate everybody joining us today. Uh, and uh, if you have any more information, if you want any more information, and you don't know who the Langley Chamber is, please visit langleychamber.com. We'd be loved, uh, love to have uh, a chance to connect with you and if you're not uh, in our network or as, as one of our members. But again, Zach, uh, Tiffany, thanks so much for taking the time to join us today. And uh, we'll uh, again chat soon.